Hey film friends, I'm Nick Furman. This is Furman on Film. Welcome to the channel. Could it be? Do my eyes detect a Pixar summer film that is actually decent? <gasps> Okay, cool. Yep, it's a sequel built on one of the best high concepts in recent memory. What if your brain was an office boardroom where all the employees were emotions who were forced to work together? Guess they decided to play the hits. Joy, sadness, and the whole gang are back. And this time around, they've added Maya Hawk on a heater. This is Pixar's latest attempt at studio resuscitation, Inside Out 2. From being the bell of the ball on the cutting edge of everything to kind of playing catch up to Illumination Studios and DreamWorks. See, around the pandemic, Pixar pushed forward much more personalized tales from unique perspectives. The result was films like Coco, Luca, and Turning Red. Unfortunately, the box office results were mixed. And due to the pandemic, several of these got dumped right on streaming. Oof and light year. So Pixar retrenched and said, nope, ixnay on the autobiographical stories. Let's get back to universal themes. One of their big wigs, Pete Docter, who directed the original, put it as succinctly as possible. The studio's movies should be less a pursuit of any individual director's catharsis and instead speak to the commonality of experience. So now we've got a sequel about the most universal of all themes. I think the sign we see near the very beginning of Inside Out 2 sums it up nicely. Pardon our dust, puberty is messy. I mean, at its core, both of the Inside Out films are really just vibrant and insightful movies that assist kids in understanding themselves and empathizing with other human beings. In some ways, this is the whole Pixar experience writ large. What's more impressive is they accomplish this by profoundly depicting what's going on inside an individual's head at crucial moments in their lives. They're extremely high concept, and especially in this one, they're proficient in the kind of therapy dialogue we see so often in the world today. The message here is about the way that joy changes in our lives and the absolutely essential lifelong project of balancing all of the emotions in our lives as we mature. Now one of these emotions is the one that takes the cake. Maya Hawk as the newcomer anxiety is just glorious. She is addled and manic and high strung in a way that is both hysterical and super relatable to all of us who have gone through adolescence. Dude, I'm anxious right now. Anxiety! Anxiety is the great creation of Inside Out 2. She's half Muppet and half Turbo Shot, and her arrival on the scene allows the sequel to plumb greater depths than the original in some ways. Maya Hawk gives us a character so hell-bent on helping her person that she'll run Riley into the ground if kept unchecked. Beyond these things, all of the worlds of the mine are still chock full of dazzling colors and little touches of whimsy. We get the introduction of sarcasm as a play on words, even some 2D character video game moments which are funny aside. Pouchy probably is the best, who my 13-year-old daughter dubbed off-brand Dora's backpack. But what really got me in the feels was this notion of a core identity in the third act. All along, Joy had been attempting to build a simple message for Riley. I'm a good person. She had done so by jettisoning any lingering bad thoughts to the farthest reaches of her mind. But when anxiety and crew take over, that message becomes a whole new one. I'm not good enough. I'm not good enough. I'm not good enough. Because it, it's a repetitive thing. Like that's how, that's why the film is effective. Spoilers aside, I'll just say that the final payoff of this deep internal struggle gets more complex and nuanced. And it left me with tears streaming down my face. Inside Out 2 had at last reached profundity. Well, look. I'll just say that it doesn't help matters at all that this film is essentially just inside out redux plot wise. I mean, think about it. Joy gets kicked out of headquarters with others, more emotions this time around, and then they've got to kind of trudge all the way back to the control room to set things right. Unfortunately, the journey back this time has a couple of cute new characters and gags, but it's way more of a slog and there is no bing bong in sight anywhere. Honestly, this sequel spends much more time in Riley's real life at this hockey camp than inside her head. Maybe that's why. Because they knew they couldn't tap into the same Psych 101 terms like collective unconscious from the original. Speaking of Bing Bong, the five new emotions aren't as good as him either. 
The fact of the matter is they aren't as memorable as the primary characters from the previous film, and those five original characters aren't developed any more in this movie. Ayo Edebiri is given almost nothing to do as Envy, which is pretty odd considering that's a really strong emotion. And neither does Adele Exarchopoulos, but I guess that's kind of the point for Ennui. The languid French speaker is a funny bit for a while. But basically what I'm saying is you end up with glorified voice cameos from really famous people rather than profound emotional ideas. Joy, sadness, and the like just really haven't evolved into anything deeper since Riley has reached adolescence. Finally, and I think this goes along well with all that I've said, this film features a pretty broad screenplay with the most obvious and universal impediments that all teenagers face. Puberty and social currency. So, I guess Pixar's plan to reach the masses has remained intact, after all. So, what do we conclude? Inside Out 2 brings back Joy, Sadness, Riley, and the others from the first film, along with a fantastic new addition and anxiety. The film beautifully captures the intense angst and challenging transformations that so many teenagers face. And it's delivered with Pixar's signature blend of humor and emotional depth. While it doesn't quite match the originality of the first film, and some of the new characters fall far short of being memorable, Inside Out 2 still offers dazzling visuals and heartfelt moments that make it a worthy, if somewhat derivative, addition to the Pixar canon. Well, there you have it. The only thing left to discuss is our rating for this picture. FOF gives Inside Out 2 3.7 out of 5 stars. If you enjoyed this review, please let us know by giving us a thumbs up and subscribing to the channel. Also, don't forget to visit FermanOnFilm.com for even more movie content. Thanks for watching. I'm Nick Furman. This is Furman on Film. Stay firm, my friends.